everybody, we're gonna talk about grout coating a concrete floor, some of the different products you can use to do so, and of course, some different reasons why you would wanna grout coat the floor. This is gonna take place whether you're doing epoxy floor systems, concrete polishing, and of course, different products for each type of system you're doing. So starting off, if you're gonna do an epoxy system, there may be several different reasons why you'd wanna grout coat the floor with epoxy. Of course, different reasons for polished concrete, and then there's different products you can use to do the grout coat. We're most commonly using polyurea to grout coat a floor. There's also some urethane systems that you can use as well, uh, or you can also use 100% solids epoxy. Sometimes even on concrete polishing, you may want to use an epoxy that has maybe a brown or gold mica powder mixed into it for some interesting vein looks over cracks or pitting, but most commonly you're going to grout coat a floor for polished concrete just to give a better gloss and to fill in all the pinholes. And then for an epoxy floor system, you're going to grout coat the floor to minimize outgassing and lock away the pores as much as possible for outgassing. If you're going to do it for an epoxy floor system, you're typically going to use your MVB, which is going to be the, you know, your moisture vapor barrier, which is your, your prime coat. You're going to grout coat the floor with that first, and then you're going to use the same product a couple hours later to roll out your full membrane for your moisture vapor barrier. But using the same product will maximize the adhesion, uh, the bond, um, fill in the pinholes, minimize outgassing, and then you're going to have a better system above it with the least amount of bubbles as possible. So getting started with what we're going to do today, we're going to use a polyurea. Uh, if you're going to do it for concrete polishing, you're typically going to want to do the grout coat after your metals. So after you cut with maybe your 30, 50, 70 grit metals, before you switch over to your transitional resins. So if you're going to put maybe a transitional 50 copper or a transitional 50 ceramic, you're going to put your grout coat on the concrete before doing that transitional 50 grit, maybe 100 grit, but 50 is typically where I like to do it. If we're doing it underneath an epoxy system, it's going to be after the prep is complete, before we put down our moisture vapor barrier. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna use our Resin Force Easy Men. Of course, there's different products you could use, but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use our Resin Force Easy Men. This is a one-to-one -one polyurea. I'm gonna fill it up to about 16 ounces or so because we have about 80 square feet we're gonna cover. Generally speaking, your grout coat, you're gonna go around 600 to 800 square feet per gallon. So if you're trying to gauge how much product you're gonna use for your floor and how many square feet your floor is, um, 600 to 800 square feet per gallon is about where you're gonna be. Of course, it's gonna depend on the porosity of the concrete, the grit that you ground last. So did I finish with a 14 grit, a 30 grit, or a 50 grit as my last cut? That's also gonna determine how much product you're gonna use. But I'm thinking about 80 square feet using about 16 ounces, we're gonna hit right around you know the money spot. So uh, kicking into gear here, I've got my knee pads on, got my gloves on. This is a one-to-one -one polyurea with my measuring cup. And I'm gonna come up to about 16 ounces. So eight ounces of A, eight ounces of B, and then this specific product, I'm only gonna mix for about 20 or 30 seconds. I'm not using any sand. When you're doing a grout coat, you only wanna use resin, only liquid, because as soon as I add a grit to this, a sand or any other kind of aggregate or additive, then I'm not gonna be able to pull this tight. The intention with the grout coat is I'm gonna pull this really tight to the concrete using this trowel, a clean trowel. All the edges are nice and clean. There's no crap on it from the last floor that I did. And I'm gonna go in both sweeping directions back and forth to get the entire floor. And the, the intention of doing this is to primarily fill the pinholes of the concrete. We wanna seal those up to minimize outgassing, but also to fill the pinholes you know, for polishing. We wanna maintain that high gloss look when we're done. So I'm just mixing my A and my B of the polyurea. There's a lot of different products on the market you could do this with. Some are low viscosity, some are high viscosity, some have a horrible odor, some have no odor, but the process is gonna be the same either way. Of course, usually these products are gonna have a very quick cure time, but when you're grout coating a floor, you don't really need a lot of working time because you're moving across pretty quick. One thing you do definitely wanna do is go in both directions over the pour because if you think of this cup as the pour in the concrete, You've got one wall and then the other wall of the pour, you know, imagine we're zooming in. When we're pulling our trowel this way across that pour, we're breaking the surface tension right here. Well, we're gonna pull our trowel again back this way as well to break the surface tension on this side of the pour. So after we go one way and then the other way, we've now completely filled this pour with polyurea and it's completely sealed off. So I'm gonna pour this down and I'm gonna work in both directions a little here, maybe a little here. I may have to switch back and forth a little bit. But I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna work my way back. 
typically I'm gonna go the, the width I can go with two hands. Um, so in this video, we're gonna go a little bit wider than what I'd normally do maybe on a job site, but I'll kind of dance back and forth on my knee pads. So first, you're basically just gonna plow it with a trowel. All right, that's it. I was almost perfect. I didn't come over this side quite as far as I probably wanted to, but this whole surface is now completely grout coated. You can see how it enhances the color of the concrete because it's basically wetted out. This will cure in about 20 minutes to regrind. So if I was polishing this concrete, my next step would be my 50 transitional resin. If I'm gonna you know, do an epoxy system, then I'm gonna let this tack up assuming this is my MVB, and then I'm gonna put my MVB coat over top of this. You notice as I was going over the floor, I had my trowel at an angle like this. It was at about a 45 degree angle. So I'm pushing the material as I'm plowing it. I'm pushing it into the pour this way, and then when I come back around, I'm doing the same thing again this way to basically close up both sides of those pours. Back, forth, overlap, back, forth, overlap, using a sweeping motion to always keep a wet edge. Of course, if I have a bead, in front of me this way, I can just come back and just grab that. Or if I'm not pushing down enough or I get the wrong angle, I can just come back over and pull it tighter. As long as you're pulling it tight, coming across the floor, it's completely wetted out and you get rid of all your little divots like that. You just pull it tight like that. And then it'll make it the next step grinding a lot easier. If you have too much material, like little dark spots like this, if you have uh, little pools or thicker material all over your floor from not pushing down enough, or maybe not scraping it tight enough. If you're doing polished concrete, it's gonna make your next step grinding a little bit more tough. You may have to make two passes because it's not gonna remove it all, but as long as you keep it nice and tight, your next step is actually gonna go really quick. All right, so that's the grout coat. Uh, just to recap really quick, there's gonna be two primary reasons to do the grout coat. One is with concrete polishing, and with that, you're typically gonna use a one-to-one -one polyurea, and you're gonna apply that after your metals are done prior to your transitionals. The purpose of that is to fill in all the pores so that as you bring it up and refine it to a high gloss, then you don't see those pores in your higher glass concrete polish when you're done and that gives it the better mirror look when you're complete. The other option of course would be for epoxy floor systems if you're trying to minimize outgassing with a neat floor system or maybe metallic epoxy and you don't want to have bubbles and craters in your primer or your body coat then one of the ways to minimize outgassing or prevent outgassing is to do a grout coat just like this with your MVB. So rather than using our one-to-one -one polyurea, we're just gonna use our moisture vapor barrier. So for example, the Resin Force Flake Shield, MVB, either clear or pigmented, uh, you can grout coat that at about 600 to 800 square feet per gallon. Do that first, let it tack up, and then put down 16 mils of that same product right on top of it, wet on wet, and that will minimize as much outgassing as possible. Of course, if you have any questions, just like as always, uh, feel free to comment below this video, and we'll be happy to answer those questions, or give us a call anytime, and we're happy to help. Have a good day.